So today is February 5th and I haven't uh, been filming anything for uh, quite a while just for the fact that I um, haven't really been doing much uh, in terms of like uh, project wise we've just been doing a bunch of random miscellaneous stuff here and there so I haven't really uh, filmed anything but uh, so far uh, I stained this uh, we're gonna seal it and uh, that way um, this is protected and uh, then I'll put that sheet of metal on top of this here but uh, we went with black uh, for the fact that uh, if you get oil on it it'll won't look like you got anything on it so uh, that way we, uh, we went with the black but that piece of metal I believe is going to come to about right I think it's right in here so all that will be a uh, metal top then this will just be wood but uh, this won't be really the main work bay it'll just be this here so that's why I wanted uh, to go with the steel on this side but I still have to seal this uh, I just uh, put this um, the stain on it uh, last night so uh, I'm just gonna let it fully dry that way it's good to go and then uh, the other thing I uh, want to get done is uh, we got these um, moisture sensors uh, we took these off the old New Holland we had uh, I just haven't put them on uh, like I said we've had this baler I believe about four or five years now and uh, you uh, the manual says you're supposed to put uh, one of these is supposed to be on the cut side and one's supposed to be on the non cut side well uh what they mean by cut side is there's knives in that plunger when it plunges it'll cut it so on a inline baler the material comes up from the bottom so the cut side is on the bottom of these well uh, if you put uh, this on the bottom i would think you'd have a lot of uh, uh wear because you got all the weight of the bale pushing on it so i didn't want to put it on there well talk to a couple guys they just mount them on the side so that's what uh we're gonna finally do so uh gotta get uh that mounted i got all the um uh the main um monitor here it's a deer monitor uh bought that uh quite a while ago when we put it on the new holland and uh we like it so uh we're gonna get it mounted on the here but I gotta get this bale pulled out because I want to put it about right in here so I think you're supposed to put it I remember 18 inches I don't remember if that was from the back or the front but really don't see there being any difference from there to up here so we're just gonna put it right there and uh should be good because uh our old one I remember uh, I put it 18 inches from the back so I'm thinking it's from the back of the chamber forward so we'll just mount it right in there and uh that way this will be uh we'll be able to monitor the moisture of the hay and uh stuff like that to be able to tell if hay's wet or dry or uh anything like that that way uh if the hay starts getting tough at night we know uh that way we don't have to keep probing it all the time because we got a handheld um moisture tester too but uh it's already uh five o'clock tonight so uh today i was working in the old shop uh getting the um pop cans and uh, aluminum and stuff like that cleaned up uh we're getting that uh getting ready to tear that building down so we need to get everything cleaned out of it but uh so that was what i was doing today that's why i didn't really film nothing because it didn't really uh think that'd be too fun to watch but uh i'm working in the shop now for a few hours and I'm gonna tear this apart uh i'm gonna try splitting this uh tonight here i already got this um i guess it's a press uh set up here oh uh, you got two bolts there that push down on this um, plate and then uh, you got these two uh, you screw these down and then it uh, pushes them onto that that way you can get this snap ring off here uh, I still haven't got my good pliers from snap on but I got these from Amazon I'm hoping 
they get this one off because this is a little bit uh, uh, it's not as strong of a snap ring as that other snap ring that's on that one it's about half as thick so I'm thinking I can get this one off but uh, <clears throat> I want to get this split that way I can uh, find out if I need or what parts I need inside here so I can get them ordered uh, that way I can get this tractor put back together and get it out of here but I need to get the parts ordered so uh, first thing uh, we'll get this uh, tore apart and uh, see if we can uh, figure out what parts we need here so you just run these down some tying them somewhat evenly that way you got even pressure so so it doesn't take much hopefully these work yeah so got that uh yeah organize this some all right so now you just back these off this part send everything off on the side now we need a uh, big snap ring plier so uh, go grab them here and uh, should be able to take this part now and uh, I have to look in the manual how this is broke down I believe you can I think you take that off but We'll uh, look at the manual here real quick and see what we do. So I got the uh, snap ring out of there and found two bolts that fit in this hole for, I think this is part of the piston anyways, but uh, you just pull that out and there's a O-ring. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but an O-ring inside of there. And then you got this great big O-ring around here. So uh, got that off, uh, we'll replace these seals just to make sure that's all good in there. But uh, that's basically how that comes out. <clears throat> then you got another snap ring inside there, which I believe you got to uh, put pressure down on here to pull that um, uh, snap ring off. So we'll get this set up. set up like that and then you just put some pressure Like that, got the snap ring 
off. And we can take this tool or press off. Teflon seals here, uh, I was told, can uh, cause some issues with the problem we're having. So the, uh, which I got pretty hot, the um, kit that I got here from the, um, from that other 1066 I rebuilt, so this is the Teflon ring that they give you, but uh, this kit give you a metal ones. They lock in like so, and uh, they're a lot stronger because steel, but uh, we'll put them on these. Uh, that came with that heavy duty clutch that I uh, put in that other tractor. So um, we'll uh, just put them in these and uh go from there but we'll uh probably split this now and uh take a look inside because i was also told there's um uh the clutch brakes in there uh they can leak so cause our problem so we'll split this thing and uh see what we got so to split this we take these um two bolts off this one and this bottom one here that holds this this housing onto this housing so we'll just take these off and then you can split it Figure out what the best way. I think probably lay it, lay it on its side here. Let me go grab some blocks so I can block this up here. We'll set it on that. Found my screwdriver. So you, yeah, it's got two, two dowel pins here. Got one down here, one up here. So you just kind of got to get that wiggled off of there. And uh, that comes out. Checking everything. So these are your, um, I think they're your brakes, if I remember right. But uh, they have seals in them, um, little uh, O-rings. And... Uh, 
been told that, that can be my problem but uh, of course they're stuck but everything looks all right but of course o-rings when they go bad there's o-rings all down on here so we'll uh probably wind up tearing all this apart and just redoing everything just for the fact that we got uh the parts so um just want to do this right the first time and not have to worry about it so uh we'll tear into this a little farther and uh, see what we find so i got this uh all taken apart got these shafts out of here the 540 and the thousand so the main reason i took it down this far is as you can see how much this was leaking here uh this seal's actually bad in here so what we're gonna do is drive these out uh i got this cheap uh um bearing race and seal uh driver at uh, harbor freight so we're gonna drive these out here real quick just like that that goes out and i believe the video i watched anyways the guy said you drive this one the other way of course that one's smaller Yeah, right, right in there you can see the seal had some chewed up spots, so we'll uh, get these changed. Yeah, they're both the same here, so we'll uh, get this cleaned up a little bit and uh, get it put back together. So now this one gets drove in from this end. Which will get these switched out here. start too good. There she goes. Get it nice and flush on there. Now we'll flip it over. Do this inside one or the five forty.
Wanna make sure this is nice and clean. That way you don't get any dirt, debris, and somewhere where it shouldn't be. Definitely was dirty. We'll put the seal in like so. Probably go with, we'll use this bigger one. Oh, it's just not quite the right size. Go down a little bit more. I'll make sure you get these nice and square, or else you'll run the risk of damaging them. You can hear it once it bottoms out like that. See that's bottomed out there so now we'll uh, clean this up and then uh, reassemble the uh, 540 and uh, 1000 PTO. I gotta get both these surfaces cleaned up some and then we'll uh, slide her back in there. So I uh, got the seals put in. Uh, I got some fresh oil. I'm gonna get these cleaned up, um, but I'll get that tomorrow because it's starting to get late. So I'm gonna head on in, but uh, got everything uh, tore apart. Uh, wasn't really planning on doing this today, tearing all this uh, apart, but um, I figured might as well just start on it and get it all tore into. So I don't think we need to order any parts because I uh, got the seals uh, in here, all the O rings and uh, these uh, locking or. Um, rings here for the um oh wherever that piston there uh so i don't think we'll need anything i just gotta put it all together so uh well i take that back i guess i need the uh seal the seal here this is the old one out of the other one i'll need that for that and the other one uh for mounting it on the tractor so I'll have to get those two seals coming. And um, I think, well, I'll need the uh, seal for this plunger here. Uh, the one that goes in here. Uh, Cause I took that out uh, of this kit for that other 1066. So I'll have to get that. But other than that, um, so them, what, four things uh, I'll have to get ordered. Uh, the clutches, I'm going to talk to my dad here uh, tonight and uh, see if he wants me to order new clutches or not for it and uh, go from there. But I think no more than what the clutches cost. I think we probably should just do it, but I'll have to talk with him. But uh, so far, I mean, this is coming apart 
pretty easy it's pretty self-explanatory really so hopefully uh, i can get it put back together uh well i'll get a start putting it back together tomorrow i won't be able to get it done tomorrow because i need a couple parts but uh hopefully get majority of it put together but so it's getting late so i'm gonna head on in but uh, i'll get you guys back out here tomorrow well i didn't uh, film too much uh today uh we got some straw unloaded that my dad and uncle picked up uh yesterday and uh got that unloaded and then uh got the combine brought home this morning the 9600 the old combine that we use for wheat uh got it brought home and uh, gonna get it washed up here uh hopefully tonight it's already about three o'clock but i got the uh, spot all cleaned up where we're gonna put it uh we're gonna get it all checked over so gonna put it back there and uh get it uh ready to get serviced and checked over uh the chopper uh still waiting for the uh, sending unit on it and uh, then we'll be able to uh, put it back together and uh, got to get a fuel hose still, but uh, got to still do the work to it. But I got some uh, um, wash from, I think it's image wash, I believe. Uh, picked up some of that stuff. Uh, gonna try it out, uh, not sponsored from them or anything, but I looked up some reviews online and they seem to be some pretty good uh, wash. So gonna give them a shot and uh, hopefully hit some good stuff cause I wanna get this combine wash. You can see how dirty it is from the corn dust uh, stuck to it. So I uh, wanna try it. Uh, it's supposed to be a two in one or a two step uh, process. They give you two, uh, soaps i guess and uh gonna give that a shot so got the 9600 up by the house uh with the hot sea uh, you just hook up a uh, foam cannon and use it uh, like that so gonna give it a shot the 9600 my dad did wash it uh last year before putting it away but i still got uh, the dirt from sitting and i want to get it washed and uh, do do some uh, testing on some products that I want to uh, see if I want to buy it and use on the other equipment because that paint's pretty faded on it but it looks like it'll uh, polish up pretty good so I want to try it on that it's kind of like this uh, chopper paint here you can see it's just it's just faded so uh want to try it on the 9600 see if uh test out a couple things uh, i want to test out that wash see how it does and then uh they got a wax or um uh yeah i guess it's a wax um uh soap that they have too so i want to try that and then uh i like to get some ceramic coating uh stuff to try protecting the paint some and shining up like this dull paint and then I want to try it on this combine because it's pretty faded too. Uh, once you get the grime off of it, which you can, can't really tell what the paint looks like. But I just want to try keeping some of this stuff uh, looking uh, nice as we can. So uh, I want to do that. But uh, got the combine up by the house. Uh, got everything ready. So I'll get up there. Uh, I got to grab uh, some stuff. I uh, got my um i guess it's a rain jacket and some pants so i don't get all soaked so we'll uh get everything ready here and then uh, we'll wash up that combine so these are the two washes i got it's a touchless uh wash and this is a two-step uh you spray this one on first and then uh believe you let it sit uh yeah for one minute and then you spray this on it and then uh, you just power wash it off so pretty easy setup and then we got this stuff too it's a wash and wax so um should uh hopefully give it a little bit of a shine because as you can see it's uh pretty dull uh hasn't been waxed ever that i know of we've never waxed it but it's not horrible by no means but it is faded and uh it's hopefully the camera picks this up 
this is original and then I just kind of wiped it down and it does uh, clean up halfway decent so I want to uh, get it all cleaned up get it in the shop and then uh, try doing some waxing ceramic coating stuff like that uh, try some different stuff on to see if we can bring back some of the shine on it but like I said it's not horrible and uh, my dad did wash this uh, before we put it away so it is clean for the most part but it's just got all this uh, dirt and uh, stuff from sitting so we'll get it uh, washed up here and uh, get it put away and uh, get it uh, waxed and stuff like that so I'll get you guys set up and uh, get this uh, cleaned up. Oh, got the old girl all washed up still looks halfway decent uh, got most uh, all of the dust off I'd say stuff works pretty good I think uh, I did scrub it it is a touchless wash but I still scrubbed it uh, didn't go too crazy with it just kind of cleaned it up some does look really nice though still shines some but it is still wet but want to get some uh wax or ceramic coating gonna look at some stuff and uh, see what i want to do but um it should shine like that uh once i'm done with it i'm hoping so we'll try out a got i think uh there's two i think there's two products i've been looking at so i'm gonna try them out on it but it does look nice i like the way it looking right now when it's wet but uh it uh did clean up pretty good so i'm happy with it uh that image wash uh trying to figure out the uh foam cannons a little bit there's uh i think two adjustments you can do more um of the foam come out at once or less and then you can do the pattern how it comes out so trying to figure out what uh, works best but uh, I didn't do the um, wax coating on it just for the fact that I want to try doing some uh, spray on or uh, um, the wipe on um, stuff. So I'm going to see uh, what works. But I uh, want to do this tomorrow. It's uh, again late, so I'm not going to pull all this stuff out now. But I want to do that tomorrow because uh, that's the last uh, warm day. I think it's supposed to be almost 50, which it's February 
6th or 7th, something like that, I want to say. Uh, so very uh, warm for this time of year. So want to get that stuff washed up before uh, it gets back cold. It's supposed to get back down into the 20s and 30s, so uh, a little too cold to be power washing. But uh, So that's on the agenda for tomorrow. But uh, it's about, I think, 4 or 45, 5 o'clock, something like that. So it's starting to get dark, but I'm going to get that uh, grain truck uh, pulled up and get that power washed here. Uh, it's got a bunch of mud underneath it, so I want to get that washed and do the uh, image wash on that. So we'll uh, get back out there and uh, get that washed. Waiting on the truck to build air, but give you guys a little walk around real quick. You can see how dirty this is. Uh, it's starting to get quite a bit of build up and up underneath here. So we're gonna hit this first with the uh, just the power washer, get the majority of it off, then hit it with the uh, foam cannon, but it's awfully dirty. And the box, it's got quite a bit of that dust build up. And it's starting to get some rust too, but uh, plan is is to get this power wash tonight get all the heavy stuff off get the box cleaned up then uh i'll probably put it in the shop tonight uh i don't know i'll see uh what i want to do because i want to get this frame painted uh it's starting to day we uh, pick corn they uh, spread salt on the road so ran through a little bit of salt and just hate doing that and then of course it got real cold so didn't get to wash it up like I wanted to but uh, I'm gonna get it washed up now and get it uh, painted hopefully but might be probably just leave it sit out I guess and uh, paint it tomorrow hopefully I don't know we'll see but uh, yeah, you just take up and mud everywhere. So we're gonna put the image wash to the test here. See how good of a job it does. So we'll get this uh, pulled up by the house and get it washed up. So I got the uh, grain truck uh, washed up underneath. Uh, I didn't do the um, image wash uh, just for the fact that it got dark and it started getting late. I think it's about six o'clock now. So it took me a little over an hour to wash that. Uh, that problem was that lime and dirt underneath, it uh, tends to blow it all over the place. So I got probably 90 percent of it and then tomorrow i'll uh, hit it again uh just with the power washer try getting some more of it off and then uh i'll hit it with that two stage um or two step wash so uh that'll be tomorrow morning uh hopefully uh, i don't know what we really got going on but that's what i like to get done so hopefully get that washed up the rest of the way and then uh, I think it's supposed to get cold then tonight or uh, tomorrow night. So I don't know if we'll pull the truck in here because I like to paint the frame, but I might do that uh, next spring. Well, this coming spring now, uh, we'll see how things go. But 
I definitely want to get it painted uh, that way that rust doesn't spread but uh, we'll see how things go but now that this thing dried off it still got a shine to it and uh, got quite a bit of the uh, I guess grime off of it that the normal power washer just doesn't get off but uh, does shine a little bit but still gonna do the uh, wax or buff to it so we'll try getting this thing to shine a little bit more because uh, shiny combine just looks nice so or uh, try getting that cleaned up some more and then uh, tomorrow I still want to get that uh, washed up so I need to get uh, the backhoe and all these boxes out of here uh, I'll probably have to move the baler yeah I'll have to move it because it's sticking in front of the doorway so I'll have to move that uh, so I'll probably pull that over here that way yeah that'd be out of the way and then move that probably over here then should be able to back out past that because i don't think yeah it's pretty tight fit there but we should be able to get it out i have uh my dad or brother or somebody watch me back out so uh get that out of here tomorrow and get it washed up that way uh get all that grime off of it just make it look nicer but little size comparison uh that's a that's a 9600 and that's a 9770 the top uh hopper extensions are even tore down on it and it's still about the same size for same height but <clears throat> couple couple years difference there uh definitely getting bigger and bigger with everything but uh but that chopper there that's got more horsepower than both of them but and it's quite a bit smaller than them but still a big machine but anyways that's uh it rambling on about that stuff but uh so tonight uh i want to work on this a little bit more i forgot there's a o-ring in here uh for this pickup tube so i believe yeah i think this can stay i have to look into this a little bit more but i think you can take i guess i can take this off and then this tube should come out should clear that but i gotta get that off uh, this is welded together because uh, these are notorious for coming out and then uh, you have your problem with uh, sucking oil but that uh, i'm going to check in there because all these seals and everything look fine so I don't think I'm having a leak other than that is a possibility so <clears throat> we'll uh, tear into that and uh, see uh, other than that I really don't know what else it could be but we're gonna um, uh, I can't buy well I can buy the seals that I need for this but by time that kit there um, with all these o-rings which is everything to rebuild it uh these seals and all your gaskets here with this one uh that's only 60 ish bucks and uh by the time i buy just this seal or gasket and the other one and that one and then uh the couple o-rings that i need uh you're looking at over the 65 bucks so my dad said just to get the um uh, whole seal kit uh we're gonna have a lot of wasted o-rings but it is what it is uh they can't they don't sell individual stuff very cheap so we're just gonna buy the whole kit uh for 65 bucks and be done with it and then uh we're gonna put new clutch pack or clutches in it uh those aren't bad per se but um we're not sure if that's part of the issue too so they're only um they're under 200 bucks for it so figure while we're already tore into it you might as well just do it right the first time and not have to tear it back apart so uh we're gonna get them coming too uh like i said it's only gonna be 
a little over 300 bucks it won't even be 350 bucks so we're just gonna get everything uh done the right the first time so uh we'll get all that stuff get that put together but like i said everything looks fine in here so i'm gonna get that tore apart and uh take a look in there and see if that's uh o-ring's bad okay so i got this pickup tube off and as you can see somebody uh well well i think they welded it and then they soldered it and uh well you can't see in there but i took a flashlight and right there's a pinhole uh, they had this um gasket type maker stuff on it that didn't stick very well so i know it was probably leaking through there and then this here if you mount it up like it should bull holes it's barely it's only in about up to there so i don't like how that is because i think it should be all the way down there which you can barely see the light through there so i think what i'm gonna do is get this off of here uh weld up this pipe and um we'll uh mount this the right way and then tack it a little bit on here because these are notorious for uh coming loose and uh because these clamps uh i don't know why international made them to where they don't really clamp much you can still turn these pipes or pickup tubes uh when it's bolted in here so i think uh, we'll just redo this and uh, hope for the best. But this is a seal that was in it. It doesn't look bad, but uh, the new one. So it don't look bad at all. But they had it that same gasket type stuff on it. So I don't know really what the issue is, uh, but gonna try fixing it right we'll get this knocked off re-welded and uh, put a new o-ring in it or um seal because kind of a dumb design to me uh it just slides in here and then has a, a seal around it so i don't know it is what it is we'll see if we can make it work but that's uh the new one so we'll uh knock that off but uh welder well my gas uh the one gauge broke off um, when we moved it uh, into the new shop here. So I uh, hopefully a uh, tractor supplier someplace got a regulator I can get and uh, hopefully get that changed out because I need the uh, MIG welder with the gas. So uh, that way cause this stuff is awfully thin. So it's gonna burn through pretty easy so i gotta be careful with it but again it's already got a hole so uh, worst comes to worst i think those are a little over 100 bucks if you can find them so hopefully we can fix it up and uh not have any issues with it but uh that's gonna be tomorrow's uh on tomorrow's agenda so it's uh getting pretty late and getting uh kind of tired so I'm going to head on in, but uh, I'll uh, get you guys back out here tomorrow.